She's the quintessential social media doom scroller who lost her mind during COVID. What do you? What are some things that you'd like to see meaningful changes in terms of policies? Oh, I want to eradicate, eradicate gender ideology. I speak out about the sexualization of, of kids. But you don't speak out about the sexualization of kids by straight people. Okay. I'm wondering why you feel like you're qualified to be a sex educator when you have no background in that. Uh, I don't want to be a sex educator. I just don't want to give kids porn in school. She's just appealing to outrage. Just make, it's so obvious. It's good to know how to do things safely if you're going to do it. Yeah, so Libs of TikTok, made famous by going on Twitter and posting TikTok videos of what she considered to be evidence of um, degenerate uh, gender ideology corrupting our youths and destroying the country and whatever the fuck. She's kind of um, a horrible piece of shit. She, um, she'll do things, she'll like, she'll tweet a video of someone, like a teacher, doing something often not even that controversial, like a teacher just saying something like, um, Oh, you know, we this week we had a really good session learning about all the all the great uh, non cis male uh, historical figures of the time because you know we feel like the cis men get a bit too much attention and we want a bit more diversity in our curriculum and it's like and she's like non binary person um, with short hair and like alternative makeup and shit like that telling the story about their in preschool kids or whatever and then the next day you find that um, like a hundred people have tried to get her fucking fired from her job and she, this just happens all the time right or she would like talk about a school that was teaching something about trans people and then the next day they've got like fucking bomb threats and shit like that yeah she's pretty insane um taylor lorenz i think was the washington post journalist who uh revealed the identity of libs of tiktok and i think she did it in a way that you could consider doxing as far as journalistic standards though it's probably okay because at this point uh libs of tiktok's account was getting uh shown in uh, referenced by congressmen and senators so i feel like if you're at that point if you're metaphorically whispering in the ears of american legislators it's probably okay that people know who you are it's probably a right that we have anyway uh, she's also by the way she's wearing Taylor Lorenz uh, was crying once on camera about being doxxed and getting harassed, so I guess Libs of TikTok is wearing a t-shirt of Taylor Lorenz crying, which is funny, but hey, uh, okay. Let's see what they talk about for an hour. Do you know what, is that a public park or is that a private? No, private. private. All right, well, we'll try to keep it short. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. It. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, the struggles yeah. of LA, I swear. Um, okay, well, now that we're going... Um, so thank you so much for meeting. First of all, I saw Seth Dillon today saying that you guys are no longer affiliated. What happened with there? I know that he invested in you early, was a huge supporter of you. What happened to that relationship? Uh, just parted ways. For what reason? Personal reasons. Yeah? Yeah. What, you didn't align Totally with... amicable. I love Seth. Yeah. He's a great mentor. So why wouldn't you want him involved, or, you know, why isn't he involved in the business anymore? Just personal reasons. I'm not going to get into it. Oh, okay. When did that, when did that sort of break off? Um, like, uh, recently. Uh-huh. So how many staffers? Tell me a little bit more about your organization. We are... This is such a passive-aggressive conversation. Holy sh... Are a small team. Uh, just a couple people. And it's all distributed? It's what? It's all distributed, as in it's all remote? Pretty much? Uh, you guys, yeah. yeah. Office space? It's remote, yeah. Got it. So when did you start? I guess, what got you into all this? I've always wanted to ask you. I know, I mean, I wrote about sort of the history of your Twitter account, but how did you get involved in politics? Uh, if you watch any of my interviews, I talk about this all the time. But uh, just, you know, COVID radicalized me. Yeah. In what way? And they were like forcing us to wear masks and not letting us leave our homes. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, not letting us work and, and, and people losing their jobs. Uh, and then people now forcing a vaccine, a, an experimental vaccine, people dying from the vaccine. So how did that get you interested in LGBTQ issues? I love how candid this is. <clears throat> it's really a translation for I lost my mind during COVID. Because I, a boomer who does not understand responsible social media usage, got bored at home for a year and just doom scrolled <laughs> and came out like this, a fucking vessel of hatred. I got, it got me interested in politics. And then, and then uh, once I was interested in politics, I 
I stumbled upon this um, this whole movement, and I was absolutely appalled by what I was seeing. Appalled by what? Um, the radi- the radicalization of it, um, the the way that they come after our most innocent and vulnerable population, our, our kids. Um, the the way that it makes it makes there's nothing logical about it. There's nothing logical about chopping off kids' body parts. There's nothing logical about giving kids porn in school. Um, there's, <laughs> there's two sexes, and that's it. So, you know, anything out of that, mm. it's just based on lies and nonsense. Yeah. Did you grow up, I know you grew up in a sort of a more conservative community. Did you know any LGBTQ people growing up? What was your exposure to that community just in life prior to sort of understanding the world through politics? Um, I never really paid attention to it. So you didn't have any LGBTQ friends or anything, no. family members? No. So your first exposure oh. to the LGBTQ world was through basically learning about it through the, the media ecosystem? Uh, through themselves, actually. They would say exactly what they what their intentions are, what their whole movement is about. Uh-huh. So I learned about it through watching their own videos. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well... I don't know. I yeah. What sort of videos were you watching? I mean, are you just all talking the about ones, the TikToks that you share? And, stuff? and tons more on TikTok. It's all over TikTok. Yeah. Very easy to find. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. You know, I I feel like there's been, especially on um, my colleagues have done great reporting on sort of like this rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base, and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts? On, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on your comment, your, the comments on your post? She's so, um, I think Taylor's, Taylor Lorenz is a little bit soy. She's going, she's going for the Nazi jugular. Oh no. Telling me to kill myself. Horrible. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. Obviously against that. Yeah. So will you come out and, c- and condemn that publicly? Oh, I would condemn it any time. I'm t- against, you know, I'm against murdering anyone of course so you're against death threats against against me i yeah i'm i would i'm a big you know as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment i don't i don't defend uh threatening to murder anyone but i guess i'm curious you know because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the in the media like some, someone like you or another journalist so are you saying that like you know if somebody posts something and then attacks follow that person should answer for those attacks? No, that's not mm. what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm saying that they... they people like tell me that, <laughs> that wh- Why would she dig that fucking hole, bro? She knows that schools have got fucking... Have, and hospitals have been given bomb threats because of shit that this person posts. Like, the God. time. So I'm just asking if you think the same thing. Yeah, I don't think I have said that here, but I... You know, I think it's I, I think it's kind of interesting. I guess in the conservative movement, there's this ideology around sort of white nationalism, um, which is a, obviously kind of a hardline ideology that's generally been pretty critical of Jewish communities. And I'm wondering, mm. as a Jewish woman, how do you feel about sort of aligning yourself Uh-oh. with those people and accounts? You know, you see this sort of rhetoric in your replies, and I only bring it up. I'm not saying that that you necessarily endorse that rhetoric. I would imagine that you don't. But how do you kind of think about those nuances when you're thinking about kind of the audience that you're building? Um, some of your audience says we should chop off kids' body parts. How do you think? What do you think about that? God, she's such a the deflection. Me. I I I don't know what you're talking about. Like a girl says she wants to be a boy, so she chops off her breasts. I'm a big, uh, you know, I believe in personal liberty and bodily autonomy so, personally. So kids should be able to cut off their breasts if they think that they're boys. I mean, I believe in gender ideology. I guess I, I personally, my my feeling is that I, know, I Just say if it's a decision taken between them, their parent, and their doctor, yeah, why the f*** not? I feel like doctors know better. Just come on. And uh, by the, by the way... Can you stop dodging my fucking questions, you sneaky cunt? Like, just say that. Come on. Go on, Taylor. Get stronger. Get more debate, bro I believe in personal liberty. I grew up in a town where a lot of people for their middle school graduation, women got nose jobs. I knew somebody that got a boob job at age 14. And oh, God, she's just going to say all fucking cosmetic stuff is gender reaffirming care. Oh, no. Maybe not. Who knows? I, I guess I struggle to kind of understand the criticism when there's certainly no criticism of that sort of thing right Mm. but then there's criticism of this other sort of 
gender affirming, you know, stuff. So, so you're you know, comparing a boy being allowed to chop off his penis to a teenage girl getting a nose job? Um, well, just to be extra clear, I don't believe that 13 year olds are able to make those sort of medical decisions. Minors are, yeah. Oh, really? And where? Yeah. Um, Children's National Hospital in DC gives 16 year olds hysterectomies. Oh, 16 year olds. They gave me that. They told me that directly. They said 16 girls and younger. That's what they said. So, so hysterectomies. Um, there are definitely minors. I know for sure as young as 12 who are getting uh, double mastectomies. Um, they allow. They definitely allow vaginoplasties for minors um, and phalloplasties. I'm not aware of a specific case of a minor, but they allow 18 year olds. Yeah, yeah which has, you know, okay, 18 year olds, so, you're an adult. But let's just get back to the great replacement stuff because I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that whole ideology? <laughs> Good. I mean, how many, there, 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 were, there were times that um, there were some months over the past three years that there were more illegals coming into our border than children being born in the U.S. Is that not, does that not look like they're trying to replace us? Who's I they? Guess, uh, sort of they're bringing America in a whole new population. population. People say that Jews doing that. I mean, damn, she's fucking bought into it. Wow. I didn't expect that. A melting pot. Isn't that sort of what America was founded on? No, but on? They're, they're actually bringing in more people than are actually being born. So I guess if you, it sounds like you sort of do ascribe to this theory of the Great Replacement. Um, how does that make I just you look feel? at the facts and the numbers. Well, so, I mean, facts. just let's give a corollary, right? A lot of Jewish people fled, you know, Europe, came over here also as immigrants. Um, I'm pretty sure as a proportion of the population, wasn't immigration so much higher, like around the last, like over 100 plus years ago, when it was like all fucking Italians and Germans and shit coming over? Oh, wait, how many... Um, wasn't it like 15, wasn't it like, it was millions and millions of Italians that came only, only over a period of a few years. Um, migration, US, uh, was it in the early 1900s, what was the exact number? It was from 1880 to 1914, 13 million Italians. I feel like it was in a smaller gap when the bulk of them came though. Let's see. Italian migration to US over time. And it was a mistake. Okay. God damn Italians. Let's see. So it's a, yeah, it's around 1880 where it starts to really babine. But say even between 1890. This is over like just barely 30 years. This period here, when you had 2 million of them coming in the space of 10 years. What was America's population in 1990? Well, it would be uh, 1880, or 1890, sorry. 62 million. It's a pretty sharp increase, no? 62 million. And what will you have here? It's just um, 19... 62 million. That's 6.2 million. 3% increase. What would it be the equivalent of today? 330 million. It would be like... It would be like 10 million people coming to America in one year. USA migration per year. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot different. Yeah, it's pretty different. <laughs> okay. Unless there are 8 million illegals coming in one year. The total population... Yeah, it's less than a million a year. Yeah, it's not even close. It's not even fucking close. And there's a lot of criticism towards Jewish people in those movements, in those far right movements. So I'm just wondering as a Jewish woman, sort of how you feel about that and your role in cultivating this fan base that might think of you as, an, as, a, as a minority, an outsider. Uh, not all cultures are equal. Mm. Yeah. So I know you have a lot of concerns about educational materials and books, library books and things, um, especially- They're importing people who want to destroy America and who, who want oh to, who come here and 
and do not stand for what America stands for. She didn't even get to, she went, uh, Taylor almost wanted to change the subject. Now she's just popping off. So, and I think, and we see it. There's time after time after time after time. They come in, they're destroying our cities, they bring crime with them, and they, they are bringing them in to replace us. And, um, yeah, I think people from from various countries, you know, they, they're all different. So, you know, just back to the sort of education stuff, I know that you're interested in removing a bunch of books from libraries um, that you consider inappropriate. I was just wondering, out of all the books that you've sort of tried to get removed, how many have you read? I've read a couple of them. Uh-huh. Which ones? Um, Gender Queer. Uh-huh. I've read This Book is Gay. Uh-huh. Um, I've read uh, Flamer. I've read... What were some of the other ones? Um, My Shadow is Pink. Uh... It feels good to be yourself. Mm-hmm. There's so many more, tons of them. How do you kind of square, would you say, I feel like you are, or at least I feel like you've spoken about free speech before and the need for free speech and sort of supported Elon Musk's sentiments in that area. Would you say that you're a free speech supporter? Yeah. So how do you square the sort of being this free speech supporter with wanting to ban literature? What kind of literature? Any kind of literature. I mean, I, I would think what that kind of literature am I trying to ban? Oh, I thought you were just trying to say you're that you. Have, I mean, you've made an effort to get books removed from schools. What kind of books? Books t- dealing with LGBTQ people and sexual no, that's education. That's not what I said. Oh, so you're not trying to get any books banned from school? Uh, that's not what I said either. Okay, why don't you explain to me what, how you're thinking about this? You just accuse me of wanting to ban books. What kind of books am I trying to ban? Uh, you tell me. Yeah, I don't think free like it's not anti free speech to just ban a book from a school. Depends on the book, but yeah. I'm not trying to ban anything. But you're not trying to ban any books. Who said I'm trying to ban books? Are you trying to remove books from libraries? From public school libraries. Okay. So how do you square your sort of notion of free speech and free expression and allowing all of that stuff with wanting literature removed and wanting access to information removed? What kind of literature? You tell me. Uh, Porn. Gay porn. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And what do you consider gay porn in these books? Uh, so you want you want to see it? Are you talking about the stuff that you've tweeted? Basically, you you can see. Yeah, it like there's pictures of like blowjobs and like how to have gay sex with like naked people and people masturbating and stuff. Yeah. Did you like, I, pictures of it? Oh, yeah. totally. And yeah. I, you know, I went to public school. And we had a sex ed class in public school where we were shown, you know, information about sexual health and, you know, sex and and masturbation and things like that. Um, I'm curious about your own education. I mean, was that something you were, were you ever, did you ever go to a sex ed class or is this all sort of new to you where you're sort of learning about how this works in public schools? Um, I'm not, I wasn't, I don't live under a rock. So you did have sex ed classes when you were growing up? Um, we had some kind of education, yeah. Uh-huh. So you do think it's important for children to have education, sex education? Uh, not the way they're doing it in public schools. Uh-huh. How are they doing it? Uh, they're giving kids porn and telling, uh, third graders that they should masturbate. Um, they're giving middle school children guides to gay sex and anal sex, um, sex toys. How would you describe the type of sex education that you would like to see in schools? Um, At this point, I want all sex education actually removed from schools because I don't trust the schools to do it. After what we've seen, I don't trust them at all. Zero. We need to completely eradicate it and then redo it. Those kids are going to get the s*** abused out of them. The fuck? Someone's saying she shows a blowjob on screen. Yeah, but it's on a YouTube video, so whatever. In a normal way, that's appropriate. So I saw you said that you got banned from Stripe today. How much money did you have tied up in that platform? Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Mm-hmm. They, they, they already restored me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're back. Yeah. Um, I noticed, you know, I think it was around last... Immigration stats. Ugh. Has percentages. Oh, look at this. These are the immigration waves before the Great Depression. They're fucking huge compared as a percentage of the population compared to this. Bro. And America's still pretty big, but okay. Last summer, you deleted a lot of your tweets and you sort of stopped posting. This is when Seth Dillon kind of tweeted, you know, asking if you fell off or, you know, saying that you weren't posting as you used to. 
What happened during that time and did you think about quitting? I have no idea and no, I never thought about quitting. Mm -hmm. Why'd you delete all your old posts? It was just a one-time editorial decision. I stand by all my posts. Oh. Um, you know, I, I guess speaking of deleting posts, you still have a post up accusing the Uvalde shooter of being trans. Um, obviously, that's been debunked. <laughs> yeah, there's a community note on it. Uh huh. So yeah. why not remove that post if you're so comfortable with removing posts? Because there's a community now. I think it's clear. It's it's obviously it was obviously it was unintentional. It was it, there was a watermark on it. It was from a meme, uh, an account that was going around. Um, and I'm glad there's a community note so people know that. Do you, that was a do you believe if, say, a journalist posts something factually incorrect or wrong, especially about someone else, you know, if somebody was to say something factually wrong about you, do you believe they should remove that or do you think they should be able to keep that content up? Um, Twitter is free speech. Um, you know, people lie about me all the time on there. And. Um, they don't get they don't get taken down um if you want it, it has to go both ways so, so you believe that people should be allowed to keep up wrong information about you and have no recourse be able to keep that up free speech is free speech okay hey. so i'm kind of curious how you so she's buying the whole i'm a twitter user not a fucking journalist argument okay Square that with the letter that you sent this morning to V Sphere, claiming that you know you were going to try to sue her for slander. Um, you know, if free speech is free speech, then why are you threatening your critics with lawsuits? Well, defamation is different. So, would you call misidentifying a? There's not defamation to call someone. Tr <laughs> okay, whatever. sexuality defamation. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, like I said, there there's already a community note on it. Uh, so I'm glad that people now and you admit know. that it's wrong, right? It was the Uvalde yeah, Shooter and trans? I wasn't the creator of that of that image. Sure, but you can imagine if somebody amplified wrong information. You're you know, saying, the media, like you know, like Washington Post and other um, places, they lie all the time. They're never held accountable. They never remove it. They lie and lie and lie. So um, oh, all the time. I am not gonna maybe ask for some examples because I feel like in the press they make retractions usually, or they might even edit the original article if they have done something wrong like they are actually held to a lot they, you can't just say it's free speech if you're in the fucking press like in the washington post if you want to hold me to that level then then i get to hold you to that level as well and all the other media um so i just don't think you know it's we're not we're not it's not an it's not uh it's not accurate to to um to compare it because was the uvalde shooter trans the Uvalde shooter wasn't trans. Got it. And so <laughs> I guess knowing that you've posted wrong information, you're saying it should stay up and everybody else should be allowed to keep whatever they have up as well. Is that, is that sort of your stance? Am I accurately understanding it? Um, is there a law against... No, I'm not asking a law. I'm just asking your personal sort of opinion. I'm just kind of curious because it seems like you have come after other people, such as vSphere and other critics, saying, you posted wrong information about me, take it down. I totally get that. That's your prerogative. It's different be with defaming um, a, a journalist like that. They're, they're defaming me. Uh-huh. And you don't think that calling a shooter trans when they weren't trans is defaming anyone? Uh, no. Okay. Interesting. Is there, so, well, this thing was happening today. People are saying that... Um Rashid Khalidi was disappointing them by saying the Six Day War wasn't fought against the United States. Is that it? Is that what we're saying? Do they have a, a thing here for is there a transcript already? No, it's just just released. Yeah. If anyone has a timestamp for this, they can tell me because I to talk to the other. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. Um, I guess I'm they're like no, they're knowingly lying about me. Uh huh. And you, and what would you say that you did when you sort of posted that about the shooter being trans? Like I said, a, a image that was streaming. going around for months that I shared from I another thing it. accidentally, it and I'm glad there's a community no, there's on there. Oh, uh, the past month. Um, I know you come from a more traditional family um, and sort of a more traditional culture. What is your family and uh, think of your success? Um, you know, you've made a huge career for yourself. You're obviously a rising star in conservative media. How has that affected your interpersonal relationships? I'm not going to get personal. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Stonewalling. How has it affected your life? I mean, just dealing with this sort of fame relatively overnight. 
So, I mean, thanks in partly to you, there's been a lot of like death threats, uh, a lot of really nasty messages. Um, but you seem kind of proud about the press that you've received. I mean, your profile picture is showing, holding up a newspaper with you in the head. No, I was saying Sam asked how many US weapons Israel was dependent on during the 67 war, but Khalidi said it was French and British weapons. Seems to go against their narrative. Oh. I mean, I know like at the time, the Arab states said that they lost because of American weapons and shit like that. And that's why Nasser kind of got away with it. That's why he was kind of celebrated after the Six Day War, because it, there wasn't, it wasn't so embarrassing to lose if a superpower was involved. But that wasn't true. Yeah, they didn't use American fucking... America didn't start helping Israel really until like 73, right? Yom Kippur and then onwards. That was when America really got stuck in. Headline. Yeah, a newspaper where they just basically lied about me. Um, I thought it's it's uh, it's it's funny that they they just continue to make up these like lies and libels. I You've think gotten a big. I mean, even if you discount the mainstream media and just talk about the conservative media, I think your platform has risen pretty significantly. What changes has that had on you? I mean, I cover the content creator industry and. I've seen a lot of people go from sort of a very low key life, which I would imagine you're living before, to a massive amount of attention and, you know, money and powerful people around you. How has that affected you? Um, like I said, uh, some safety issues, um, in part thanks to, uh, to you and to some other members of the media. Um, but I'm not going to get into my personal life. Oh, no, not about your personal life. I'm just wondering about your career aspirations. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? We'll see. You can make all the plans you want, and God could decide something else. So, so you don't have any sort of five-year plan, 10-year plan? I mean, I have plans, but uh, nothing I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious, you know... Why did she, um, why did she agree to this? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if Trump was re-elected, would you be interested in a job with his, his administration? Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Who are you supporting in the election? Uh, there's only one, there's one candidate, Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you be campaigning on his behalf? Uh, we'll see. Would you prefer, would you, I mean, are you hoping to kind of, I guess like, would you see yourself in DC? I haven't made any plans yet. Mm -hmm. How did you um, get connected with Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma. And how many times have you been to that state? Um, I was there once. They have, unfortunately, a lot of wokeness in the red state. And uh, uh, I'm trying to help. How'd you originally sort of, what, how'd Oklahoma get on your radar as opposed to I, some others? Because I started posting about the stuff going on in schools there, um, you know, like I do across the country. And then, you know, people, you know, people were very... U.S. intervention in the Suez Canal crisis. That was against Israel, though. That was them slapping Israel on the wrist. That wasn't America being Israel's friend. They literally fucking shot on Israel and France and the UK. So, um. that that this was happening in their schools. So, and you've been once. Um, what do you think qualifies you to be on the board, or uh, you know, have to do with education, the education system there? Being that I don't believe you have children in the Oklahoma schools. You don't live in Oklahoma. You've only been once. Hmm. How does that qualify you to sort of serve on in that capacity? What are the qualifications that they require to be on this committee? Um, USA Today reported on that, but I believe it was that you had to, oh God, I'm not, I might get it wrong, but it, um, I think you have to be some sort of educator. You have to have worked as an educator. Okay, I was a teacher once. You were? Yeah. Okay. So you feel like that qualifies you to sort of inform policies in Oklahoma? Um, I wasn't aware of any kind of qualifications that they require. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe they require any qualifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I was thinking more even just un informally, um, but that makes sense. I guess, you know, speaking of Oklahoma, obviously we saw the tragic death of Nex, um, you know, a yeah, young very child. Tragic. I'm curious about your reaction. Um, you know, you posted a selfie shortly after people were asking you to address the issue and you said, you know, to, to the haters and the losers. Who are you addressing in that statement? Anyone who hates me and anyone who's a loser. Okay. Why yeah. would you choose to post that in response to people asking you to speak about this child's death? It was not a response to that. I guess, why would you post that prior to making any statement about Nex's death? So, just to be clear, you're trying to police me on when I'm allowed to post selfies? No, just curious. 
I wanted to post it. I thought it was a cute picture. And I just decided to post it. How do you feel about Nex's death? It's very tragic. Uh -huh. It's horrible. Do you believe Nex should have been allowed to receive gender affirming care? Uh, mm. She should not be allowed to go on irreversible puberty blockers or get sex change surgery. Mm. How do you think about the fact that, you know, so often your posts, things that you post about hospitals, libraries, schools, etc., um, you know, after you make these posts about them, they deal with threats, sometimes bomb threats, sometimes harassment. Um, it's, we don't know who's calling in the threats. Um, and <laughs> so I apparently mean, threats that come to her are because of Taylor Lorenz, but threats about hospitals that she posts about on her Twitter account, on her very large Twitter account, we just don't know who's doing it. Okay, okay. Look, bomb threats are bad. I've said that a thousand times. Um, people who call in bomb threats should be arrested and investigated. Uh, you can't call in bomb threats. Um, but I, don't, I just don't know what, it, what does it have to do with. Well, I guess, you know, um, a recent NBC investigation found at least 30. I mean, people like this are just like the worst cunts. Like the fact that she can see how Taylor Lorenz talking about her can result in her getting death threats, but she can't see how her amplifying and distorting stories about fucking hospitals to a very hostile audience isn't going to result in those pe those hospitals and schools getting threats and bomb threats and harassment. The fact that she can't see that, she can see it one way but doesn't look at it the other, like people like that are just the fucking worst. Like, ugh. I mean, I know she can, she's just being obtuse, but three instances where you posted about a specific person or institution and that person or institution was immediately bombarded with death threats and violent threats um including bomb threats other violent threats and if taylor was a uh, a bit more on the ball she could say that like apparently death threats that come to you are my fault so why is it not your fault when people you amplify get bomb threats and harassment and death threats that's a pretty significant correlation how do you you know, what are your thoughts yeah, on Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but I got like tons of death threats um, the past, this week after the entire media machine came after me. So are they responsible for those? I don't think that there is um, the same correlation. Are you receiving bomb threats? I'm, I'm receiving death threats. Like, hi, I'm going to come murder you. Yeah. And I definitely sympathize with you there. Like I get those literally the article goes live and then I get those threats. I get the same thing when a Fox News article goes live. So are the, is the journalist responsible? The journalist who has the article? I would say, um, you know, there's a different responsibility when we're talking about media. And I, and I guess to me, a death threat is different than a violent bomb threat. A death threat, I think we're kind of getting normalized to them, unfortunately, online. We get a lot of them. Probably you and I get them constantly, 24-7. I'm wondering kind of how you think about taking these obscure people, right? Because you and I are both public figures and I, I imagine you and I can both, we have a high tolerance, right? For what we, what we can handle online. Say you're taking a private citizen, you know, a gay teacher, for instance, in a small town and you post about that person. And then that person subsequently who had no media presence prior receives pretty violent threats. How does that make you feel? We need it. We need to answer the Remember the, the question first, though. Rose Mosaic, thanks for the sub on Twitch. I really appreciate that. Hey, is the is the journalist responsible for actions that have to happen after? So you consider sort of t your posts about private citizens, incendiary posts. You consider that journalism. I'm an independent journalist. Uh huh. And do you think that there's a difference between doing journalism on a completely private figure that has no public presence and no institutional power versus reporting on a powerful public institution or person? You still didn't mm. answer the question. Is the journalist responsible for reporting for any actions that happen after the reporting? Personally, I think that journalists should take care and should, should, you know, should consider sort of the framing. And I think that they should do their best not to... It, not to appear as if they encourage that sort of behavior. I haven't, I've noticed that you haven't necessarily publicly condemned that behavior, publicly told your supporters, listen guys, stop, you know, stop calling in these bomb threats. Who said it's my followers? Do you, do you have information that it's my followers? Um, I guess, who, who else's followers would it be? I don't know. So you There's post- There's 300 million people in this country. <laughs> so you post- Bro, she's such a fucking slime. What the f 
How do you know it's uh, Taylor's followers? How do you know it's fucking the followers of any mainstream publication that speaks? Come on. Post bomb threats follow, and you're saying it might be just unrelated people? I have no idea. It's the same. It's, it it's, it's not just that she's like kind of she's really dumb she's a really fucking stupid person as well <laughs> oh god steps to to find out we filed some foyas with police departments hmm. yeah. what have you found uh we we haven't got to anything uh useful yet that we can use but uh actually one of them we know it's like some foreign actor not even from the country so huh. who knows who it is yeah um it seems like twitter is your main platform these days although i know you've been posting on rumble how much money have you made from the platform? It's personal. Mm -hmm. Is that what sort of portion of your revenue um, is based on what, uh, Twitter as opposed to other platforms? That's personal. So speaking of Twitter, do you regret not getting a blue check? Because then you can make tons of money. No, I don't monetize online. You I don't monetize. Yeah, I don't. I, if I was an independent journalist, maybe, but I'm not. I, I don't monetize on any of my social platforms. Um, how, you know... I noticed you sort of, speaking of the media, you've changed your approach recently, or at least it seems like you're being a little bit more antagonistic towards the media and a little bit more forceful in the way that you speak about the media. What led to that change? Uh, being lied about and defamed for two and a half years. Damn. I guess what led to, uh, I would assume you felt like that for quite a while. What led you to sort of change your, the way that you speak about the media? Or the sort of Well, their attacks were ramping up. So like I said, you know, the lies and the defamation. Hmm. The hypocrisy. You know, if you eradicate transgenderism, which I believe you suggested in a post today. No, I never suggested that. Oh, okay. So you right. reposted a post that was <laughs> okay. advocating for that. What would happen to the people that have already medically, socially completely transitioned and are leading happy lives? What would happen to them? I mean, what's your plan for, for that? If transgenderism doesn't exist, which it seems like you're, that's what you believe, what happens to all the people living happy lives as trans people? Well, it, First of all, the whole trans is it's based on a lie. You can't change your you can't change your gender. Okay, but so they could they could go live their 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 life. I mean, I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. Sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house. I never said is that. Is it only for kids or what? So you're totally okay with people being trans, just not as long as they're in public. No, I never said that. They could it's the whole thing is based off of a lie, and I think that um, the fa this lie cannot be mainstream in our in our society. It's just it's a lie. And so they can or they can't do it. I don't. Uh, she's not really. I, I feel like she, Taylor is maybe trying to straw man her a little bit, but she is just asking questions. So I feel like if she feels like she's being straw man, she could just say what she actually believes. Because I don't know if she's one of those conservatives. I don't think she's one of those conservatives. Who's like, oh, I don't know. It's all fine. You know, do what you want. I'll call you whatever crazy thing you want to be called. But just not in front of the kids. I, I, I don't know if she's one of those ones. Or, yeah. Is, is this in Tel Aviv? No, it's in fucking California. Do you believe? Um, LA, I, think. I like the truth. I like truth. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm saying, what what's the what's the harm of people expressing their gender identity differently than you believe it to be? What what harm are they causing? Um, like I said, we are a a um, a nation of truth, and I I'm, I'm, I seek the truth. But that's but I'm asking about the harm. What's the harm? You might believe it to be false, but what's the, the harm, harm is that there's a lie that is very mainstream and is being embedded into every institution. I guess I'm wondering what the material harm is. Aside from it's maybe uh -oh. something that you disagree material with, and your version of the truth is different than their version of the okay. truth. What is the material harm of them living in their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm necessarily. So there's no harm. I didn't say that. So can you name a single harm? <laughs> mm. uh, the way that it's pushed, on, it's pushed on to kids, first of all. What's pushed on to kids? Uh, gender ideology, transgenderism. Uh -huh. But if they're leading happy lives and they just are leading a Well, there are studies that show that they're more suicidal after transition. No, that's not true. Yeah, there's a study out of Sweden. That is not yeah. true. That is not true. Yeah, you can look up the study. Well, taking into account all of the happy people... Um, I've heard people bring this one up. Swedish study, more suicidal transition because i'm pretty sure every other study that you'd read on this would say that suicidal ideation drops 
when people transition. Is this it from, I think it's the top one. The treatment for transsexualism is sex reassignment, hormonal treatment and surgery aimed at making the person's body congruent. 324 reassigned persons. Persons with transsexualism, how old is this study? After reassex assignment have considerably higher risk for mortality, suicidal behavior, and psychiatric morbidity than the general population. So this is what the study said. So we're not going against that. Hang on, let's see what we have here. Hmm. What else do they say? Oh, but they also say that surgery and hormonal therapy alleviates gender dysphoria is apparently not sufficient to remedy the high rates of morbidity and mortality found among transsexual persons. Improved care for the transsexual group after the sex reassignment should therefore be considered. When they say higher, do they say higher than the general population or the way it sounds here? Oh, it's just the general population, not higher than they were before. Wait, no, th that can't be what it's, oh wait. It's, that's what it says. It's higher, not after, oh my God. Persons with transsexualism after sex reassignment have considerably higher risks for mortality, suicidal behavior, and psychiatric morbidity than the general population. Our findings suggest that sex reassignment, although alleviating gender dysphoria, may not suffice as treatment for transsexualism and should inspire improved psychiatric and somatic care after sex reassignment for this patient group. So this study supports sex reassignment. Oh my god. Oh, she's so dishonest. What a fucking dumb cunt. Oh god. See, why can't they just sit there and look up the study? Like, why not? What's wrong with that? Just what? She'd fucking die. She'd have a heart attack. <laughs> oh no. What are they teaching in these damn schools in the United States? People that have transitioned. Yeah, this is a massive conservative talk. I hear it so many times. There's a study from. I thought it was more complex than that. I thought it was like there's, I thought it might have been a long time ago and there are some groups that they, um, they transition and then they alleviate the gender dysphoria, but they experience more harassment and rejection and all that shit. Oh my God. I didn't know it was actually just, <laughs> it's still not that of the general population. Oh God. Who are not harming anyone. You can't come up with a single material harm. So if someone says, I'll be happier if I'm blind, should a doctor pull their eyes out? I think that's quite different than gender ideology, but people do, you know, I guess. Someone says I'm happier if I, if I chop my dick off and we should just let them do that. I think, you know, there's a lot of gender affirming care that women do, right? I mean, women ascribe. Oh, she's going to, she's going to say that nose jobs are gender affirming. Oh God, for I don't. I don't like these. I don't like these arguments. If it it, it, it almost sounds like Taylor Lorenz hasn't had these discussions with a fucking right winger before. She seems almost like unprepared for some of these talking points. Yeah. To certain gender things, you see women getting boob jobs to affirm their gender. I mean, we're in Los Angeles. We see this. It's a good argument. No, it's not. It's a shit argument. Like gender affirming care, just because it has, just because of like um. Just because someone like like a man like getting rid of his balding pattern or a woman getting a nose job, that's not just because it semantically has to do with gender rules and all that shit. It's that's not what we understand to be gender affirming care, and we all understand this because getting a nose job does not have anywhere near the same level of urgency as transitioning as HRT. One of them is actually quite necessary and you can probably get it like you should be able to get it for free on the NHS and shit like that. Whereas something like a nose job, depending on the context, you might actually have to pay for it because it's just cosmetic. It's got nothing to do with your mental health and all that shit. Um, like when people say gender affirming care, they mean, they mean the transitioning stuff. They don't just mean like it's a separate category from the cosmetic stuff. Kind of gender affirming. So again, you're comparing boob jobs and nose jobs to well, they're gender people affirming. Be, uh, buying into the lie that they could uh, change their sex. Breast enhancements are gender affirming for women. There's a lot of women that feel small chested. They feel... How old is the study? That's interesting. How old is the study? Yeah, I don't like that argument. The, it's 2011. But 20, 2011 is not old. It doesn't, doesn't really count as a... 
obviously the discourse around trans people was very backwards even in 2011 but as far as the research goes it's like it's research that came from around this time that we still use today so it's research from 2011 or like sort of 2000s to 2015 16 that led to you know the rise in puberty blockers in 2017 18 19 20 until today like it would be gender affirming for them to have plastic surgery and they're allowed to do it and i, I noticed that you don't critique that i guess i'm curious Haya, you know there are a lot of people that have ideas about women right and about what makes a i'd absolutely call viagra gender affirming care i mean <laughs> okay I don't, I don't think i agree but what makes a woman right what makes a appropriate woman how should a woman you're saying you're not you're against people sort of like living lies or living outside this um ideology that you've constructed some might say look we're both women over the age of 25 working child i certainly don't have kids you know um they might consider that not okay for a woman do you think it's up to that do you think it's okay for because then the obvious problem there is that they what if the counter is just like okay well if you want to transition, just pay for it, dickhead. <laughs> like we do with Viagra and all the other sh that is not considered generally. If you ask a doctor, would they say that? I don't think a doctor would say that. I feel like this is like a very much, I feel like this is a very much left wing like idea that it's all like any kind of like surgery or any corrective thing or any medication you can get that loosely links onto gender rules. We can call gender affirming care them to dictate how you know you live your life as a woman do you think it's up, up or sort of where does that line get drawn so so again you're comparing uh boob jobs to a teenage girl chopping up her breasts well first of all teenage girls get boob jobs but breast enhancements are gender affirming for many women i'm i'm asking you why is it that people have to live under your sort of view of gender and it's not my view it's science it's facts, it's biology. But biology, if, in, in, if we're talking biology, there's a spectrum of gender. There's people that are intersex. That is a very a rare medical condition that has nothing to do with- But trans people are rare as well. We're, if we're, yeah, that's the whole point in it not being like a, I mean, the binary, the whole point of it being a spectrum is the idea that there are, there's a majority of people that fit very neatly into typical male or typical female. But then there are outliers, and one of those outliers so what includes intersex people, the other one would be trans people. Like, yeah, that's why we're talking about it. It's just because they're a minority doesn't mean they don't, we don't account for them. Like, what the f With someone deciding that they could be the opposite gender. I guess I'm still kind of struggling to understand how- Why are there so many transphobes in chat? Are there? Where? How you think, if your view, say tomorrow Trump is elected, he says, all right, we're going to all live by Haya's, you know, decisions right what what about all these happy trans people that are living their lives that are not harming anyone what is what harm are they doing by living their life as a woman who medically transitioned they're uh -oh. they're adults you know i understand you have problems with kids but with adult trans people what what's the harm that they're doing to society to society it's they're they're spreading a lie that is affecting children also uh-huh so you just believe gender is is a lie and what if somebody said to trans you, you can't change your gender <laughs> uh -huh. and what if somebody oh, said to you God, you know you're this... not a real woman you're not a real woman because maybe you don't you don't meet these certain specific definitions of femininity that's fine i don't care they can call me whatever you want but what if you would be forced to live by that system do you think it's fair that you would you know be forced is that to based live? in like science well i don't think any of it's really based in science well it is gender is a sexes. social construct well, uh, well gender is actually made up Exactly. Um, yes, uh, we agree on that. Who we by, agree by a child predator, by a pedophile. Uh, we don't agree. <laughs> yeah. We so, don't agree on so that. he made up gender. I've never, I've, I've heard this talking point once. I never bothered to look into it. The idea that the concept of gender was coined by a pedophile. <laughs> oh God! It's just as well that. Um, but yeah, she's doing the turf thing. Oh, good. This is where this is where the the turf uh, thing self id intersection is where the all genders actually fake and turfs say that because what they actually mean is all the genders real all the genders fake delete the gender let's just go back to sex because sex is real chromosomes are real genitalia is real just go by that sex based rights woo and then you're like oh wait a minute oh <laughs> oops yeah this debate is so shit. i don't know why it's just as well can uh this late right chick is 
hanging herself with her own words half the time. But I feel like Taylor is just giving her like the most dull fucking objections. Like, oh God. And now they conflate the two and they use it to, uh, to basically uh, trans kids. Um, so there are actually two sexes. And there are zero genders, oh. and there are many personalities. That's what I believe. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Um, she took know, the turf pill. A lot pill. of LGBTQ people say that the laugh your pill. posts cause an enormous amount oh, of pain. No. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that your reporting on me causes me pain? I feel sad for that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So would you stop? Uh, no, I'm a journalist, and you're a public oh. figure. But I'm just talking about, you know, these, these non-public Random figures, people. right? These non-public Civilians. figures that are... Well, if you put yourself out there on a public platform, then you're kind of making So anybody public. that posts on social media is a public figure, in your mind? Uh, if you're putting your videos out there with the intention... Fuck, she's making the destiny argument. <laughs> oh, no. Bro, the fact, like, it's, it's so insane. Because remember, a really long time ago, it was just on Twitch... It was just on Twitch. We were looking at one of these random non-binary uh, TikTok accounts that got blown up by libs of TikTok and had people going after their job. And thankfully, their district and their superintendent supported them, so they were fine. And they just looked like the nicest in person. Like, and they were like, all their TikToks were about how much they loved teaching and uh, how much effort they were putting into it, and like how they were learning all these different like teaching techniques and all this shit. Like, they were such a committed like kindergarten teacher and lives a tiktok tried to fucking destroy this person's career and shit because they spoke about what were they talking about teaching about uh non-cis male historical figures or some shit oh god and that it should go viral you want publicity so if somebody's posting on social media which inherently posting on social media you're looking for attention right you're saying that that meets the bar for a public figure uh, i'm not a lawyer but I'm asking your opinion. Uh, I think that these people, well, first of all, a lot of the people I post about are actually in positions uh, that are public but teachers. I'm talking about doctors. the people that haven't, right? The individual private citizens that you've posted who are not, I would, I would argue they're not public figures. You're saying they are public figures because they're posting on social media? They want to be public. They're public. They're going on a public platform and publicly posting a video on a, on a social media site that is that is meant for your videos to go viral uh-huh and what about twitter would you consider twitter as well a platform where stuff is meant to go viral every social media if someone posts something on social media that and it, it could go viral it's always so a risk. got it so when you were building your audience and had hundreds of thousands of followers then would you also agree that you were a public figure yeah. mm. um i think that if i if anyone who puts something out there publicly uh anyone could share their stuff Got it. And so, but I'm saying you consider these people, LGBTQ people, who are just posting on social media public figures. I said I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the legal I'm just asking your opinion. One thing, said, you, one thing you noted, and I'm, I'm only asking this because I know that you've noted that... Um, I can see Scarlett is falling into the, the debate trap of the gender, everything is gender affirming care crowd. Because what you do is when you want to say, the, the argument for Viagra, just so you guys know in chat, for not being gender affirming care is that... It's just not how the word's used. That's just, that's it. The way we use gender affirming care is to refer very specifically to people who have gender dysphoria and need alleviation through HRT and surgery and need it generally fairly urgently as a matter of like um, risk to mental health and all the rest of it, right? Like that's the... That's that's what gender affirming care is. It's for trans people. That's what it is. Okay. That's what it's. That's when people say when people say there's a bill passing about gender affirming care, you're not sitting there going, oh. Wait, what do you what do you mean, Jennifer? There's a Viagra bill. There's a fucking hair transplant. No, it's a no. It's about it's about trans people. That's what it's about. But people now, like Scarlett, have bitten the fucking bait, and now they're trying to argue that fucking erection problems have nothing to do with masculinity. <laughs> oh God! You can call it gender affirming care if you want. I don't know. It's just a, I don't know what it serves. It's like you're trying to change the word that as it's understood by the entire medical community for what to to bait people into silly debates i guess that's like yeah, whatever is it referring to a medical procedure gender affirming care 99.9 .9 percent of the time unless you're on fucking twitter or whatever like it, yeah it refers to hrt and fucking uh gender affirming surgery that's what it refers to yeah for trans people yeah you know, when I reported on you that you felt like it was unfair and that you didn't meet the bar for a public figure. 
So I'm just kind of wondering as somebody with such a large social media audience, you're saying people with much smaller social media audiences meet the bar for a public figure. Wouldn't you have considered yourself a public figure? Um, if anyone puts out uh, content publicly, then the, that content could go anywhere. That's what I believe. You know, it could go viral. Anyone could share it. It could go to the wrong side. You know what they call the wrong side of TikTok. Yeah. Uh, it could go, you know, people will see it. You, you can't control that. Mm-hmm. that that's, why, that's why they hate me because they want to create this content and they only want their bubble to see it. And then I'm like showing it to other people and they just can't handle it. I think you're editorializing it as well. No, I provide very mm-hmm. little commentary, probably the least from any other Twitter account that's even a quarter of my size. Let's talk about drag shows. Um, you know, you've come out a lot about, you know, you're Uh-oh. very against drag shows. Can you give any examples of children being harmed from drag shows? Also refers to social transition. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. That's referring to social transition. Yes. Yeah, there was one where this mom was saying that her kids... Although I think when they say care, does, does that count as care when we're talking about like... Because I... When they talk about bills trying to ban gender affirming care, do they mean banning social transition or do they mean, I thought they mean strictly in the medical sense? Or, you know, I don't know, whatever, don't care. It decided to be uh, non binary uh, after watching the drag show, and then the drag queen helped the kid buy like new clothes to be non binary. And you consider that harmful? Yeah, well, because non binary is made up. Like you can't, mm. there's no such thing as non binary. Um, and then it just leads a kid on a path. Uh, where probably they'll end up on, in a hospital getting some other... Banning a chair, bans using proper pronouns. You seem oh, very okay. against That's plastic surgery. Are you against... Well, I'm against sex change surgeries. Uh-huh. What about women that want to get their boobs done, want to get their nose done, want to get cheek implants? We're just going to go in circles. Well, I'm just curious. But I, it's good yeah. to note that you're, you're uh, comparing nose jobs to um, to teen girls getting their breasts chopped off. Well, people often, teen girls also get boob jobs to make their breasts bigger, right? So uh, the, both are both are gender affirming in different ways. You seem very obsessed with one and not interested in the other. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. And I, I guess I don't really understand that because both are gender affirming in different ways. Um, I don't call it gender affirming care. I call it uh, sex change surgeries for people who are sold a lie that they can change their sex. Uh-huh. Where do you sort of hope this will end up? You know, like all of this sort of the advocacy that you're doing. Um, I know you said you don't have a five-year plan for yourself, but what are some, what, what's, if you were sort of like going to describe your platform, what, do you, what, do you, what are some things that you'd like to see, meaningful changes in terms of policies, laws? Oh, I want to erad- eradicate gender ideology from, from public life. From public life. I thought she said, she said, but she doesn't want to eradicate trans people from public life earlier. Did she just flip on that? <laughs> what the f- Completely? Yeah, the whole thing is built on a lie. Well, you certainly have a gender yourself. Gender ideology. No, I don't. I have a sex. Gender. There's no such thing as gender. Okay. I said gender is made up. No I've, again, I feel like once you realize that someone is in this camp of the, there is no gender there's only sex i feel like it should be easy to just hold on to that in your brain and okay i can't tell you how black pilling this is to watch as a trans person uh yeah she's a pretty fucked up person man i agree that gender is a completely social construct no it doesn't exist it's okay. uh there's zero, there are zero genders. I have a sex, I'm female. Go there down. are zero genders. Yeah. So you want to live in sort of a post-gender world where everybody can kind of express themselves through personality however they like. Well, that's what it is now. Uh-huh. But they're just calling it gender. So, But, you know, is- there's males and females. And then, you know, so if there's they were to, infinite... I'm just kind of curious here, and I'm yeah. certainly not a gender scholar, so I'm not sure, you know, maybe somebody sort of posed this question too. But if people were to just, let's just say, you know what, fine, we eliminate, we eliminate male, female, non-binary, whatever gender, we eliminate that. We're all just people, or we identify by our sex. Um, would you still be okay with people, you know... Uh, dressing wearing dresses if you know they appear to be biologically male or um you know women shaving their head you know things like that would you are you still okay with that as long as they're not calling themselves by a different name um don't sexually 
possibly offensive hot take. I think this topic would be less of a big deal if some vocal trans people weren't so obsessed with discussing it along with conservatives. Most people just don't care. Um, I, I definitely know people, or I've met people, I don't really say I know them, but I've met people who have literally said that, like, you know, they're not right-wing because of all the crazy fucking anti-immigrant or whatever the fuck else, like the fascism, like, but they'll say that they're not left -wing. And usually if I see someone who's, like, not chosen not to identify as left-wing, I feel like they often say it's because of the trans stuff, like, because they feel like it's just overblown and shit like that. But I don't really know... I feel like a good question to ask anyone who thinks that is like, okay, who's to blame for that? Like, because I feel like there are a lot of people who actually don't, who have that objection to trans people or any of the medical stuff or anything like that. They just don't like the way it's portrayed or spoken about in the media or the way that it, like the way that it's been presented to them. And the problem with that is, is like, I don't know if what they've been presented with is cringe trans people or cringe trans people who were amplified by right-wing media <laughs> yeah because i feel like i feel like the left became obsessed with trans people because the right were that feel that kind of feels like how i because i remember a long time ago thinking oh yeah some people do the transition thing. i don't give a f that's that's where it began and ended for me it's like okay but now but then i uh but then I found out that everyone was talking about I feel like I heard it from right wingers. I heard heard it from like Jordan Peterson and uh Ben Shapiro and shit. Hmm. In any case, debates like this would be fine, I think, if uh there was a bit more competency from or not even competency, but I just like I guess Taylor Lorenz just hasn't had that many debates with <laughs> people like Reichick because so far, everything Reichick has given. Um, is like very, very obvious right wing talking points, like all of the level one. It's like the first page of the book of fucking transphobic post it notes, basically. It's the fucking, it's the first post it note of anti trans arguments. And I feel like if you just did a like a day of prep for all of that stuff, you just you would be so ready. You have to be ready for the the study about rapid onset gender dysphoria, the fake one that basically, well, the one that uh, only pulled the parents of kids on transphobic websites. Um, the, you have to be prepared for the Swedish gender study that said you're more likely to kill yourself after transition than before. There's that one. You have to be ready for the one about the idea that you can just go into a clinic and say, I'm trans, give me puberty blockers, and they give them to you. You have to be ready for that one. You probably have to learn a bit about Lupron, I guess. Uh, that's one that I'd probably want to look up before going into a debate like this. Um, you'd have to be prepared for arguments. Like, if someone goes to the to the doctor and they say, I feel really sad that I have eyeballs, could they take their eyeballs out? Would that be okay? Is it medical treatment? Um, you'd have to be prepared for that argument. You have to be prepared for the argument that uh, actually there's no gender at all and uh, we're all just our biological sexes. Yeah, there's a few things that you can... You have to be prepared for the argument that being trans is delusional. Yeah, there's a lot of shit that you have to prepare for, but like, it doesn't take that much. Surely as like a journalist who's covered all this stuff for a while. like Because yeah, again, like, Reichick here is being very much a fucking NPC as far as our arguments go kids that's what i'm against but i'm just saying like you're you want to live in a post-gender world where there's no gender right and anybody can just have the personality and express themselves however they want that's how it is now these people who are calling themselves a different gender but it's i'm just saying up. you're, you're they're not right. really and you're well, no we have we, what do you mean we even without trans people we still have gender right we still have like fucking men's and women's clothes and some things to do are like manly and other things to do are like feminine that have nothing to do with biological sex so um it's not like gender just suddenly got imposed on us by fucking trans people what the fuck is she talking about she was with the with the language around that right so i'm saying let's eliminate the language all right do you support people adults let's just talk about adults for the sake of you know this discussion do you support those adults having bodily autonomy dressing acting you know painting their nails or shaving their head or doing whatever they want to do to express themselves. I don't care if a guy wants to paint his nails. Hey. So you don't care, you don't care about... Just leave the kids out of it. Don't sexualize the kids. Don't confuse the kids. So speaking of sexualization sexualize. of kids, you know, I think one group of young people that's constantly sexualized is young women. Oh God, see that, you have to be prepared for that one because the ultimate 
fucking uh, response to that one is, is what about a kid wanting to change their pronouns or feeling like uh, they need to puberty block or something like that for their gender issues is sexualizing? What about that? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like we've discussed trans kids like quite a lot or reading read studies about them. What part of that makes you think about sex? Makes you think about kids sexually? You fucking perv. You fucking pedophile. Like, why would you? <laughs> that, that would be the response to an argument like that. Like, oh, God. If something, ab because people talk about sexualizing kids when we literally talk, when we used to have debates about pronoun changes in schools, right? Like a school helping a kid socially transition by just changing their pronouns. It's like, if that makes you think about sexualization, like that's such a fucking, that's a self-report, okay? <laughs> like, um, What are your thoughts and, and why haven't you, um, I guess, come out more against some of the the sort of sexualization of young women, especially in the right wing media ecosystem. There's a focus on youth in women. Um, there is a focus on support, but keeping an eye on people making irreversible decisions. Damn. Sheer with the trans skepticism. That's the that's the progressive virtues of uh, the Middle East. That's the bastion of progressive liberal values in the middle. I'm sorry. I'm joking. All right. And sort of women under 25, women losing value with age. This is stuff, you know, that's been I'm a woman the in, the, in the conservative movement. I never once felt sexualized. You've never felt sexualized yourself, but I'm saying, how do you, why don't you speak out about sort of sexual abuse in, in the straight world, I guess? So you, you just changed topics. No, no, no. I'm saying like, you're saying we're, we're against the sexualization of kids. Yeah. One group of children that's constantly sexualized is young women. 13-year-old girls, 14-year-old girls are constantly sexualized on the internet, often by conservatives. So I'm wondering, especially given, you know, what some commentary has come from, from like people at the Daily Wire, for instance, right? They've made comments about young women, women losing value with age, which is kind of a pedophilic ideology. Why, why not speak out on that? I, I've never seen that. I have no evidence. You've of... never seen young women getting sexualized? Um, of course she doesn't. She's fucking radicalized by her little fucking solo bottle of fucking cheap wine listening to Adele 2012 doom scrolling on conservative media. Of course she doesn't know that conservatives at the red states are the worst ones in the country for child marriage. She doesn't know that fucking child beauty pageants are issues. She doesn't know that right now fucking young conservative leaning men are dominated by fucking red pill discourse where they think women are basically unfuckable by the time they turn 30. Of course she doesn't know about any of that. She's the quintessential social media doom scroller who lost her mind during COVID. <laughs> um, I focus on kids. And you've never seen young girls getting sexualized? I've seen young girls getting sexualized. I'm referring to the Daily Wire thing. I, I can't answer okay, for but that. Okay, but let's just talk about young girls. Why don't you speak out about that? Why don't you sp speak out about sort of heteronormative, cisgender men, traditional men, sexualizing young girls, young female girls? I speak out about the sexualization of, ch of kids. But you don't speak out about sort of the sexualization of kids by straight people. I don't discriminate mm. on who's sexualizing the kids. But if the you, kid's being sexualized... Well, like the amount of fucking like uh, anti-trans commentators who defend taking underage boys to fucking hooters, like wasn't Crowder doing that of all people? Like, who's the right-wing commentator who was openly defending taking kids to hooters? And like literally the fucking girls dancing around them and shit like that, like in a pretty provocative way, like twerking in their faces and shit. Uh, defend uh, hooters. Kid. Who was that? Who was that create that um it was it was one of the Daily Wire guys, I think, or was it Crowder? Can't remember. Damn, double rifter. Thanks for the 60 wait. Why am I forgetting if those are for some reason I thought they were rupees, but they're no, I was stupid anyway. There's only one group of kids that you're talking about, which is you're concerned about sort of people being sexualized by the LGBTQ community. I'm asking, I'm saying a lot of straight older men. Not necessarily the LGBTQ. I mean, if they're, you know, I don't want straight teachers to be talking. New York Times article just came out where the UN has found evidence of sexual assault in Hamas-led attack on Israel. The UN. Interesting. Talking about their sexuality and... 29th of January. Oh, oh, UN inquiry finds evidence. 
Wasn't the New York Times article, wasn't the debate more to do with whether or not it was Lower systematic box. and widespread? I mean the debate like outside of the f***ing psycho denier oh, uh, online shit. Oh, Mogus, nice one. Well, look at that, hang on. Schools either. So you don't, you wouldn't be okay with a straight teacher, for instance, discussing their marriage? I think it's weird. Uh-huh. Why would someone discuss their marriage in a classroom? Honestly, I don't know. You were a teacher. I feel like teachers... I, no one had any f***ing... I'm sorry. When I was 10 years old, like, my teacher, when I was actually a student in his class, got married halfway through the school year. Oh, it was all he would f***ing talk about. He had the day he was getting married. I think... Were some school kids at the wedding? Were some people from class? Maybe. But in any case, yeah, our f***ing primary school teacher, like... Yeah, f***ing teachers talking about their wives. Or their husbands, like, that's, that's pretty normal. Yeah, no one cares. Obviously, unless it's f***ing gay or trans, right? Yeah, okay. Sometimes do that, you know? I, I do think that there is a sexualization of children. Um, oh, did Reddit delete the fucking thread? There was, a, there was a Reddit thread that I never actually started reading because it had like 200 comments of people debating whether or not ha Hassan was a rape denier for October 7th, right? I don't know if he is or isn't. I haven't seen him talk about that, but... Was there a tweet where did he retweet someone who was, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the legitimate debate you could have is whether or not it was systematic and widespread. Like it seemed to have come from the top down or if it was like permissible from the top down. But I don't know if the, de the debate over whether or not it happened at all is done. Like that people, people are so fucking like lost in the sauce that they think it like none of it, there's no evidence of any of it. Like that's so stupid anyway. From straight couples. I mean, I know that I went shopping for a friend recently to find little baby onesies and when you're looking for little boy baby onesies a lot of them say you know I want where's my mommy's tits or whatever you know you see these kind of why sorry why did that reddit thread get so was it brigaded or why was it so full of comments what happened also why is this reddit so fucking purple <laughs> why is there so much purple here I don't know how this happened, and I think the people who did it don't know how it happened either, so we're just kind of stuck. <laughs> this is cute. The banner's nice. This is nice. The person who made this, I think I might get them to do banners, like a proper banner. Because this one's a bit blurry, because you can tell it's been cropped. It's... <laughs> it's too much. I would say sexual innuendo on baby's clothes. I've never seen you post about that. I've never seen you post about sort of sexualization from the straight community, I guess. Mm. I've never, dis I don't discriminate against who's doing the sexualization. Um, but you do, your content I does. also, I guess, like, what are you defining as sexualization? But um, I've never said like, Oh, like, now we're getting a bit more narrow about defining sexualization not when we were describing literally just the concept of like social transition or pronouns or like any of, the, any of that stuff for kids that's sexualization but now now we need to know the, the more tight definition okay 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 like oh look here's porn in school and the librarian is not straight no i don't, I don't care who the librarian is i don't care if they're if they're straight or gay or trans or whatever they, they want to say they are yeah you know, i just I, think it seems I guess I wonder why you don't focus on sort of like young girls as a woman. I mean, were you ever sexualized as a young child? No. I find that interesting because I think all women kind of experience that, although it depends on your community. But I do think that there's a, a focus on women and, and age as well. And there's this notion that women um, lose value as they age. And I know I hear that all the time in my comments from conservatives. I've never once seen that. Actually. You've never seen that? No. I feel like I've never you... seen a conservative figure say that women lose value when they age. Why do you think there's such an obsession about <laughs> women in ages then? Women, I, I've never known there was an obsession. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Huh. Women in ages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Oh God, the social media bubble. This is how I feel because now, now I'm starting to realize I'm going to make this about me. Okay. Uh, and my interests. Uh, I'm starting to realize that now when I'm talking to like hyper partisan pro-Palestinian people, I am actually thinking we need to fight on every factual ground because I actually think there might be some pieces of information that I find very obvious that they actually don't know anything about. Like, I might actually, that might actually be the case. I, I kind of forget that people can have really 
really fucking hyper curated social media feeds that they don't see bits of information that should be quite obvious to someone who's taking interest in a particular topic. Unless he's trolling. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Um, there is a notion, especially platformed by conservative media, that women lose value as they get older. Um, you see this espoused constantly when people are talking about reproductive capabilities. Oh, her eggs You're are saying when up. they promote like family values, like, oh, you should get married and have kids? Is that what you call sexualization? No, no, no. no. I'm talking about more um, derogatory remarks. See, she doesn't know. She's genuinely fucking confused. I don't know why you think she's trolling made against women and their age. I bring it up because I think a lot of your fans seem to obsess about women and ages. And so it just, yeah, it just, I, it's misogyny at its core. And I never see you speak up about that. So I was just kind of curious about. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm wondering like, like why you don't speak up about the sexualization of kids. I don't think it's a problem. I don't see, I guess I don't see as much. If I saw an example of a child being sexualized, of course I have a problem with you know, certain things, I, I will, I will actually, you know, I will say- So do you I think, think we should give kids porn in school? The the images of like gay sex? And I, so I- Wait, we, Like is sex education content porn? Cause some sex education you watch people fucking, I don't know. Yeah. And public, again, I went to public school and in public school, at least when well, I was growing least up- depictions. We were absolutely yeah. given um, literature, you know, explaining sex, educating, People. It had pictures of like anal sex. Oh, absolutely. And it actually talked about condom use. What grade? God, I mean, be like I six don't or remember, seven. But right? certainly, probably middle school. I think that's when we had sex ed. Um, so you think like books like Gender Queer, This Book is Gay, we should give that to kids in school? I have not read those books, so I don't know. But I do okay. think that it's important to educate kids about sexuality, if nothing else, because. You know, I have spoken to women um, that were abused um, sexually when they were young, very young. And one thing that they've told me is that they wish that you they... You don't need an anecdote for this. This is also pretty well borne out, is that kids who have access to sex education are less likely to get abused because they more like because they know what's happening. Like, they're quicker to realize what's happening. Um, and also... Because they know what's happening, even if they can't avoid the situation, they can tell someone about it. Like they're not as vulnerable because, like, if they know, then also like a relative might be less likely to abuse them because they don't want to get caught, right? Like, so there's obviously sex education, and that's sex education from a very young age. It's just that sex education evolves over time, doesn't it? You can get sex education when you're five. It's just it's different from the sex education you get when you're ten, eleven, twelve. So when you're five, you can get fucking sex education that's shit like, oh, you know, here are your private parts, and those are your private parts because they belong only to you. If anyone else goes near your private parts, they're a bad person. Like, you can do that, you know? It's had Start with the, the language to talk about it and they weren't educated they <laughs> grew up in a i only know two that i've spoken to about this but they've grown up in sort of societies where they weren't very educated about sex ed they didn't receive sex ed in class they went to a catholic school or other types of schooling and so i do think it's really important for kids to understand sex because as we all know a lot of teenagers can be sexually active and i think sex education is important to promote you know healthy attitudes, healthy understandings of sex. I mean, these are human bodies. You can't just expect to send kids off at 18 with absolutely no sex ed and then think that they can function in the world. So we should give kids um, like pictures of gay sex in, in middle school and actually elementary school, some of them. I guess I'm wondering what you consider that. I think- Do you want to see a picture? Well, I don't know, but um, I mean, I, are you talking about the ones that you've posted on, yeah. on your Twitter account? Yeah. I guess those don't look like what I received when I did sex ed, but I think sex ed is important because it, it actually helps. So you didn't have those types of things when you were in school? Oh no, we had sex ed. I'm I mean, saying the you images not, I posted on my not, Twitter. Did you, when you had sex ed in school, did you not get books with, with graphic with imagery? With pictures of gay sex? I remember, I, I don't know, I can't, I don't remember how old you are, but I grew up in the 90s when HIV and AIDS was a big thing Taylor and we certainly learned about gay sex <laughs> in school. So you, so those pictures I posted on my Twitter, you had graphics like that? I actually sex? don't know. I haven't, I, I don't remember to be honest, but I do think that it's really important to But knowing those kids. pictures, you seem to know very well what my, those pictures are. Do you I think don't, that? I don't, I've seen oh, you. Oh, you kept referencing it. Well, I've seen you post things, well, but I, I don't know. pull it up. Um, but I think, yeah, I, mean, I guess I feel. Because we need to put this into context. Yeah. Well, we won't know the context, of course, because we don't know the context of how those things are being taught. 
Oh, so we could give kids like pictures of gay sex as long as it's in the proper context? She's just appealing to outrage. Just make it so obvious. Yeah, gay kids are going to have sex. It's probably good to teach them how to do it if they're going to fucking do it, right? Rather than them learning off of like wacky, like pornography or just winging it because it's good to know how to do things safely if you're going to do it. Like, and we give sex education to straight kids. So just God. Fuck. I don't know. I mean, it's up to the educator to determine, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious, Kaya, why? Kaya, is it Kaya? Oh, yeah, why you sort of focus so much right? about the LGBT? You keep mentioning gay sex, but you don't mention straight sex. Why is there such a focus on the LGBTQ world? Oh, I don't want pictures of sex in school. Any pictures. So you don't think children should receive any sort of sex Puritan. education, straight or gay? I said I don't want pictures of sex in school. But you think that they should receive picture-free sex education? Uh, no, I think we discussed this earlier. She doesn't okay. want schools yeah. to handle it at all. I'm curious kind of how you're thinking. <laughs> She's so you know, combative. When you think about your, the way that you put out content and the way that you think about growing your media empire. Here, this is the, a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> what, I don't God. know what book this is from. Gender queer. Okay. Should you show it to the so camera? Should this picture of a blowjob be in elementary schools? I've never seen a book. Bro, like who that gives a, who gives a fuck? It's a fucking drawing. I'm doing. I'm back on the drawing pill. Okay. It, uh, who gives a fuck, man? For kids, like if they're getting sex education, what? Bro, they're gonna do. They're gonna find their way to doing it one way or another, right? Like, ugh. But I have no oh, idea. It has been. Okay. I posted about it, yeah. So tell me a little bit so about So should it be in elementary school? I have no idea the context. I have no so idea. So in context. what context should it is it okay if it would be in I have school? absolutely no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I would not I I don't know, Kaya, because I haven't seen the rest of that book. I don't know what's in there. I don't but know. The you, but there is a context that it would be okay to give kids pictures like that of gay sex? Anal sex in, in I guess elementary sex, school? I guess sex pictures in school, I don't know. I don't know, because uh, you know who I would defer to on that? Just because neither of us are sex educators? I would defer that question to a qualified professional, a sex educator, and say, hey, you're an expert. You've treated tons, you know, you've educated. This is on YouTube. Why are you guys complaining? Like, this was allowed on YouTube. Taylor Lorenz only has 13K subs. Yeah. But this video got a lot of views. Okay tons of people you're a full-time sex educator you've really studied this what are the appropriate boundaries yeah i don't know like so that school that apparently wasn't a sex ed uh drawing that was like just in a school yeah, i don't know i don't know what the rules should be with that like it was just a comic I don't think that myself as a journalist or a media personality, I don't think I'm the right one to make that decision. And I guess I'm wondering why so you there, So there, the, I have seen sex educators say that they, they want these these books in, in schools. So then uh -huh. you're okay with it? I think I would want to talk to the Bro, the fucking, v v like the, the shit we watched on a little VHS tape in the year 2002 was more graphic than what we just saw there. I'm sorry, what the fuck? And everyone soyed out and everyone was like, ooh, <laughs> like, yeah, and everyone laughed and it was really funny. And then, but we were informed by the end of it. <laughs> like, learned, a, learned a thing or two. Bro. Sex educator and rely on whatever the sex educators say. Okay. I'm wondering why you feel like you're qualified to be a sex educator when you have no background in that. Uh, I don't want to be a sex educator. I just don't want to give kids porn in school. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. Tell me a little bit more about sort of, you know, just to change topic, about your content world. You know, you put out a lot. You've got a whole staff now. How do you see your business growing? And what areas would you like to expand into? Uh, I'm not going to get into my business strategy. Uh-huh. Do you see yourself? I've noticed that you've been doing more video content. Are you leading harder into Rumble? Um, I like doing video content. Do you have a partnership with Rumble? No. Would you? Uh, maybe. What are your thoughts on sort of the way that Twitter has evolved? Um, I love Twitter. It's <laughs> the best. I love Elon. Elon rocks. Have you spoken Elon to Elon? Elon saved free speech. Not like on the phone. <sighs> Have you talked? Would you meet with him? Yeah. Um, what's been sort of... What's been your like kind of criticism of Elon? Because you're like outspoken against Elon. I, you know, I'm a huge supporter of free speech and free expression. And I haven't liked um, the way that Elon has kind of arbitrarily banned journalists. I think that's Ooh. a little concerning. Who did he ban? 
Oh, he, many. I mean, he banned, uh, I think he banned Tyler Brown, the researcher. He banned, obviously, myself, Drew Harwell, other journalists. Um, so what, So, how do you feel about all of the conservatives that were being banned left and right when Jack Dorsey had I'm, you know, I'm of the personal opinion, and I've said this on Twitter and many times, um, that, look, it's Matt up to Bender. every... Did Matt Bender get banned, bro? Fucking Elon. Jesus. What a clown. Platform to set their own... Remember his uh, rewrite the whole stack. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to figure out what the fuck he's talking about <laughs> what like just get like two guys with a whiteboard and say what is twitter <laughs> fuck. community guidelines i'm not oh lexi bat thanks for the raid i really appreciate that hope you had a good stream it's been a while since i've spoken to you a huge believer in permanent bans and i've always said that and i you know i defend that in the sense that these platforms evolve and people's usage of them evolve and people evolve. As you just said, you weren't even a, you were a completely private citizen five years ago. Just, well, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Just watching some brain damage trans debates. How are you? You had no political ideology. Now you have a political ideology. You're a very different person. So when I got banned from Twitter, you you were upset at that? Like you thought that was wrong? Um, I don't remember you getting banned from Twitter. I got banned a few times. Not permanently, oh, but- previous to Elon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 My feeling about any bans is that there should be a path to redemption, should you say. That doesn't Learning Box, I was shown an animated video of someone eating a girl out in ninth grade class and I turned out perfectly normal. Yeah, I, I feel like especially these Northern European countries, like whether it's Scandinavia or the UK or fucking like uh, the, the Netherlands, like they're, yeah, they're, they're just pretty fucking... The sex education is like, it's quite in depth and it seems fine. Like, I don't know if we... um have like the same levels of child abuse that they do in like a red state <laughs> where there's no sex education at all in some parts. Uh, I don't know. Tommy is being racist to seven VC. Oh no. I mean that I don't think that it's in the right prerogative to ban people for five years, yeah. 10 years, whatever. I just personally feel like if you're going to issue lifetime bans, you should give people a path to abide by community guidelines. If you join back on and you break community guidelines again, look, that's on you. But Personally, I think that, you know, I, I, that's just my belief, and I've talked about that for years. I think that there should be a path to um, path to abiding by. If somebody says, hey, look, I know I broke community guidelines. I know what I was posting was wrong and in sort of violating those rules. I could see, yeah, I could see, I could see um, tech companies allowing that back. And actually, that's what Elon has done, right? I mean, he reinstated all those people that were permanently banned. Elon is the greatest free speech warrior, I think, of all time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I'm trying to think Christ what else. I feel like I've gotten through yeah, most of these things. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we're good. What else do you have going on? Uh, nothing much, you know. I'll just continue uh, making fun of the media like I do best. Um, I still can't, I, I don't think you answered me to begin with, but what is- Whilst throating at least half of the media, but okay. Some of your favorite media Guzzling. Outlets. I said I like independent journalists. But who? Like, uh, some of the people I follow on Twitter have the best news. Like who? Like, who are your top three? Mm. Um, Stotos. Hey, joking. I would say, first of all, I love Daily Wire. Um, you know, I, I like uh, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh. I, I like everything they do. Um, I like, I really like Jack Posobiec. Shout out to Jack. He's great. Uh, I like Mike Cernovich. He's, he's cool. Um, who else is there? Yeah, there's a few others. Are you um, still on Substack, by the way? I know you had a Substack at some point. Yeah. What are your top uh, media place for news? 404 Media. Love 404 Media. Are you familiar with them? No. Great website. Uh, independent journalist. Um, Walter Bragman, who does Important Contacts. Great Substack writer. A huge fan of his work. Um, God, there's so many. Uh, Matt Bellany, Lucas Shaw, Julia Alexander. Yeah. Great, great people. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, I'm trying to see. I feel like that's it. I'm just trying to Let's think. Get an Uber and get out of here. I'm gonna order an Uber. <laughs> Awesome. All right, let's make sure. Let's see. I know. Sorry. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh my god, I think this died. Oh my god, it did. Wait, let's see. Hopefully. God, what a sour person. <laughs> god damn it. Do you think she actually just went there to wear that T-shirt? Pick up about the sexualization oh, wow. of whatever, dude. That was shit. that was a shit debate. Oh god. Oh.